Hello, hello. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Nadia Adam. I'm a Vedic astrologer and psychic medium. So today we are going to talk about the upcoming week, the energy update via perspective of Vedic, Vedic astrology between 3rd of January until 10th of January. All right. So before we start, I would like to say Happy New Year for all of you and wishing you to have a wonderful and beautiful year. And I hope 2023 will be the source of the start of success, abundance, everything good <laughs> manifest in your life. Okay. So, okay. However, as usual, I will divide my explanation into several parts because there are a few things going on right now in the sky, which I would like to talk about. The timestamp will be in the description box. Okay. Right. So let's start with Mercury here. So. We are seeing Mercury is retrograding in the sign of Sagittarius, right? It's in the ninth house of Kalapush Kundali. And note that Mercury during this time is very good time also in Avamsha, okay? This means Mercury has a strong power or energy to manifest whatever it's supposed to manifest at the moment in Sagittarius, all right? Okay, Mercury is sitting in Uttrashadra, Nakshatra. I have mentioned the the meaning or the mythological story about Uttrashada and Puvashada in my article, the link of it is the link is already attached in the description box. You can check it out, right? But let us talk about it briefly. What is it? So people who have a strong Uttrashada and Puvashada nakshatra usually they are very clever, intelligent and able to detect the flaws or the mistake of others or even of their own project. Now, we have Mercury retrograding in this particular nakshatra, which means that it will let us acknowledge or realize what exactly happened in the past that lead us to current situation in life. Let's say, for example, we felt in the business, let's say we felt in the relationship, partnership, whatever it is that we left behind last year, or we still feel some sort of resentment, some sort of uh, pain towards it, somehow it will start to reveal itself why what happened just happened so we can correct ourselves correct the current situation or perhaps let's say for example we are jumping into another mistake so mercury right now retrograding it's just like oh okay it's like a bulb of light you know in your head like ah now i get it now i understood now i know what's supposed to be done in order for me to avoid the same mistake that i have done in the past Mercury retrograding in Uttrashada, it will let us understand and realize our mistake, people's mistake, but also how we're going to solve it, how we're going to fix it. Perhaps we're not going to realize it fully, like what exactly we're supposed to do, but at least there is some sort of empathy or realization during this time. Okay? And since Uttrashada is in nakshatra ruled by sun and sun is sitting with mercury yeah so if you can see here sun is still in 18 degree of sagittarius while mercury is 27 degree of sagittarius so that means sun is behind mercury yeah so we can see here that sun will act like a pop of light shining bright into the quality and quality personality features whatever it is you can call it to just like so strongly highlighting the energy of mercury and it will start to manifest now let's say for example mercury it rules communication so for example maybe you will get sudden communication from someone because he or she realized something okay for example again like we realized about some aspect that we need to change right now like sun is just making mercury very strongly heated okay it's not combust i'm not gonna say it's combusted but the it, mercury itself is just heated right now and you can see clearly via mercury what exactly you're supposed to do what exactly should be done during this time right because mercury again it through communication intellectual connecting with people most probably there is a theme connected to relationship and partnership all right now i always said and i said that before also that jupiter 
right now is in the vacation mood because it's sitting in a Pisces. Okay? So it's not going to have a strong impact to control Mercury. So Jupiter is mainly, okay, it's it's in the water sign, right? And I believe that it's in Uttra Bhadrabhadha. Okay, this is in Uttra Bhadrabhadha. Shetra, this is Jupiter. So perhaps it's indicate that the energy of empathy, realization, um, acknowledgement, whatever happened, it's due to some sort of spiritual insight that we get. You name it, whether it's via dreams, deja vu, if it's just like I realized something, I didn't realize it, or just like some intuitive insight that comes to us, it's all intuition or inner work that led us to realize these things or what's going on. All right. So I hope it's resonate. <laughs> I hope it's clear enough. Mercury will continue retrograding until 18th of January. Okay. So it's like we still have good two weeks, I would say, of Mercury retrograde. All right. I think this Mercury retrograde was not really heavy. Until now, I don't I don't think it's pretty heavy though. But yeah, it just gives us some sort of realization of things going on. Okay, so this is one point. Second point that's going on right now, Venus is conjunct Saturn. All right? It's in the 10th house in Kalapush Kundali of Capricorn. So Venus and Saturn, they are actually really good friends. All right? Um, in the methodology, it said that Shukra was a guru of Shani. So they are right now conjunct each other and it's in the sign of Shani as if like a student or disciple is honoring the come or the visit of his guru. All right? Which is, that means it's very good. Some people, they say, like, oh, Saturn with Venus, it's a very bad combination and stuff like that. But no, in my own perspective, it's not really bad. All right. So Venus and Saturn here might kind of make us become more practical and more logical oriented when it comes to relationship, when it comes to partnership, especially also when it comes to signing a new contract or new agreement with anyone in our life. Again, because of the Mercury that we realized our mistake of what we have done. So right now we become more careful of what we are heading to or what we want to manifest in our life, okay? So Venus, again, it rules our finances, our for money, our relationship, partnership, sensuality, our creativity, and our passion, right? So this combination makes us become more grounded and more settled. Um, settled energy in a sense like we're not gonna um, being so pushed to get into things done or let's say for example we're not going to be very ambitious we're not going to be in rush I would say to create things or to manifest things so you might feel or sense that January and Feb can be slightly stagnant even when it comes to finance or when it comes to market and economy in general, you might sense it. It become like a bit, you know, just beginning of the year and people kind of changing their strategy, changing their plan and so on and putting their new budgets and whatnot. So you could feel some sort of stagnation if you have a business or, yeah, you could feel that, right? January and Feb, but eventually we'll start to manifest the better energy when Venus moves out from Capricorn, which is, I believe, at the end of January. All right? So even in terms of, like, romantic relationship, it can affect, I don't want to say negative way, but th there is an invoking of being more practical with each other, being more, like, planning things from the logical perspective other than being very emotional or very like you know like go get it and stuff like that so it's like a very grounded energy right now right 
we know since that together actually it's a good period if you want to sign a contract if you want to sign um, business partnership and so on but i believe it's better to wait after 18 of january when mercury moves direct okay so i hope it was helpful so last point i would like to speak about is the full moon so full moon it will occur just give me a second okay let me change this i think it will be on seventh seventh or sixth depending on wherever you are okay cool so let's check it out. okay here we go so we're going to have moon in gemini and of course we have sun here in Sagittarius, which means we're going to have a full moon in Gemini, right? Um, I do not know exactly at which degree, but I believe it's 22.54 degree of Punar Vasu Nakshatra in Gemini side, not Cancer, right? So anyways, I will speak about it more in a vlog, which I will hopefully post it around Friday. Yeah, I think around Friday, um, I will post that on my website. But however, what we can indicate here or what we can understand from this full moon. The full moon is happening in Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury. And Mercury also is opposing sign, right? It's here. It's sitting here. So there is a strong conversation in regards to Mercury. Perhaps whatever I just explained in the first part regarding to Mercury, visualization, epiphanies and whatnot, all of these things maybe will get momentum when the new the full moon hit, which is around six of six or seventh of January onward. So that's when you have a window between fifth of January until you can say around tenth of January. This is can considered to be a bit critical period where people might change their mind, might change their perspective, might change their plan in blink of eye like literally in blink of eye okay so this is a very critical period that you should not make any plans or mean to put i don't know to sign a contract let's say for example or to just starting something during this period it's not really advisable gemini is a wiry energy it can change from a to z in 10 minutes i would say or even less than that right i'm not saying here personally in the natal chart but i'm talking here in overall as an energy when i see moon is gemini i just do not i don't feel comfortable with that because gemini change the energy very frequently and it depend on the moon the mood sorry it depend on the mood it depend on the situation they just change it you know so um it can indicate that mercury retrograde whatever is supposed to manifest it will manifest the next few days right so um it can also manifest as misunderstanding miscommunication um very rigid or fiery communication or people become more like um adamant about their views or their opinion and stuff like that right so <clears throat> It's better to just stay away from people during this full moon <laughs> okay so that's it as overall for this week i hope you guys enjoyed thank you so much for hearing me and if you need to book your annual reading for 2023 the link of, of my website will be in the description box thank you so much i will see you next week for the new update and wishing you to have wonderful and beautiful week okay thank you bye